Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio. James Corbett of CorbettReport.com here going over the latest regarding the battle for the internet and the battle for consciousness, which, again, is really what it's all about. Because exactly as we were stressing on last night's program, for anyone who didn't hear that, I hope that you will go into the archives and take a listen to it because I think it was a particularly good one. But exactly as we were stressing last night, it is all about trying to get the people on board with the agenda because if the people do not go along with the agenda, they cannot implement it. So that's exactly what all of this uh, shenanigans with the uh, mega upload takedown in the middle of the SOPA strike and the anonymous counterattack and all of this is playing out into the soap opera to try to convince the people who have no idea what's going on, who don't understand how the internet works and who, who never look past the headlines that, oh, there are some terrorists out there, they're trying to take down the internet, we better get them. I've heard this SOPA bill is such a great idea. And again, it's just to get the majority of the people to go along with it so that they can implement it. So... So uh, although I don't know about the practices that Mega Upload may have been doing behind the scenes, and again, you can read the uh, the, the DOJ filing to see uh, some of their ev evidence that they've submitted about what uh, Mega Upload was doing that was in violation of existing law. And of course, if it, it was in violation of law, that's one thing. But to, to have done it and staged it within 24 hours of the SOPA strike is clearly not coincidental. So... M-E-G-A upload it to me today. Mega upload is gone. And now we see the next stage of what's happening here uh, unfolding before our very eyes, but shifting our focus completely, or at least uh, to a different aspect of this unfolding agenda. We're going to turn to our regular Thursday night guest, James Evan Pilato of foodworldorder.com to talk about all of the latest food, health and environment issues from around the world. So James, thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks so much, man. You know, and it's always hard because, you know, you and I do New World next week. And James, so, are you there? Talk to me. Yes, I'm here. Do you not hear All me? All right, cool. Didn't hear you. All right. Oh. Okay, great, James. Thank you again for coming okay. on tonight. Uh, it's great to have you here. So uh, once again, we're going to be going through some of the most interesting food, health, and environment issues. But you have any uh, quick take on the mega upload issue before we get, get into that? That's what I was going to say, that, you know, you and I do New World next week, and so we cover so many issues there that... It seems like for the last couple of weeks since we've been doing these Food World Order episodes, of course, there's other massive news going on in the world. And, you know, we want to talk about Marines desecrating corpses, but here, you know, mega upload. Now, James, correct me if I'm wrong, but on yesterday's episode of New World Next Week, did we not say, oh, yeah, and they've been doing, you know, a lot of these, you know, domain takedowns and DHS fed seizures and 12 hours Not only later, did we say it, you specifically said it. So hats off to you for pointing that mm. out. But uh, but absolutely, it's just part and parcel of what they've already been doing. And they don't need SOPA to do this. Mm -hmm. That's the main takeaway from this story, I think. Mm -hmm. So rather than getting all, all into that, I think what I'll say is, what did you say about Ronald McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did I say about him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Painting a mustache on him? Yeah. yeah so. That was just my, my transition into Food World Order <laughs> coverage. Good. That was, <laughs> that was so smooth. All right. <laughs> what do you got up for us first tonight? I think, like so many things, I I got this from my girlfriend. She she told me about this, and this is a report from the Wall Street Journal, which, again, is posted up to foodworldorder.com. And so many ways it seems like it takes us a long time to work our way back around to what should be kind of fundamental that we have to, you know, work a long way around and we have to do a battery of research to say, oh, maybe the food we eat does affect our brain. So there's an article from the Wall Street Journal called A Gut Check for Many Ailments. What you think is going on in your head may be caused in part by what's happening in your gut. A growing body of research shows the gut affects bodily functions far beyond digestion. Studies have shown intriguing links from the gut's health to bone formation, learning, and memory, and even conditions including Parkinson's disease. Recent research found disruptions to the stomach or intestinal bacteria can prompt depression and anxiety, at least in lab rats. Better understanding the communication between the gut and the brain could help reveal the causes of and treatments for a range of ailments and provide diagnostic clues for doctors. Now, this is a, a, a fascinating piece, but I'm going to jump down a little bit just to kind of maybe crystallize it in the, in the way that it was sort of you know, told to me. The gut, considered as a single digestive organ that includes the esophagus, stomach, and intestines, has its own nervous system that allows it to operate independently from the brain. This 
enteric nervous system is known among researchers as the gut brain. So, James, I'm not sure if you if you have a take on this or if you've you know run across to any anything like this. But yes, it has you know the animal testing, which is questionable on uh, on a number of levels. But this, to me, again, strikes me as just the, you know a, a, a head slapping duh. Exactly. Well, that was my exact take on this as soon as I saw it. It's sort of like, well, did we really need this research mm-hmm. to show this? But I mean, I suppose it's good to nail down the, the precise processes by which this works. But it does go back to the very fundamentals of idioms that we've had in our language for who knows how long you are, what you eat and all of those sorts of things. Uh, it should be self-evident that whatever we put into our gut will affect our brains. But but on that note, it's interesting. I've never really heard of the gut brain before, but uh, but now I have something else to blame my bad eating habits on. <laughs> and and again, I, I think like we've said on, on so many food levels, this is all, you know, I this is just as educational for me as it as it hopefully is for anyone else out there. I, I feel like I've heard the gut referred to actually on, you know, just some of the spots on, you know, alternative media sites. And, and, you know, whether that's, you know, the, the doctors or physicians and folks, I, I feel like that's a term that I've that I've heard before. And perhaps somebody out there can help us out on that one. Well, I've heard the term gut, but I didn't think it was actual scientific term. <laughs> that, anyway, <laughs> but isn't that fascinating, too? Because what do you say? Well, how do you know? Well, I, I feel it in my gut. Right, right, right. So I, fi- yeah. I find well, that. There you go. There you go. And perhaps, you know, there are so many things that are encoded and hidden in our language that uh, I think reveal some of the things that mm-hmm. we've known for, for generations that have somehow been uh, been covered up. And that's why, uh, for example, Alan Watt right here on RBN mm-hmm. likes to say research is uh, called research because you're doing it again. You are researching. So, uh, so perhaps there is something to that. And Alan Watt, people like Jordan Maxwell and, and even our friend Richard Grove, all those guys, yeah, have a great knack for, you know, almost any time I, I check out their work, they say some word or, or break down some word that, again, is that kind of head slapping like, oh, my God, we say that word and see that word and write that word all the time. But when you really break it down, yeah, the story is in there. Absolutely. So so what's uh, what do you got up next? Well, I guess this gets us more into some of those hidden uh, uh, occulted knowledge and information and organizations in a way. BASF to stop selling genetically modified products in Europe. We grabbed this from the old gray lady, the New York Times. BASF, the German chemical group, has abandoned efforts to sell genetically modified products in Europe, including its Amflora potato, because of overwhelming opposition to the technology, the company said in a press release, and I provide the link for you, where they say, quote, There is a lack of acceptance for this technology in many parts of Europe from the majority of consumers, farmers, and politicians. Therefore, it does not make business sense to continue investing in products exclusively for cultivation in this market. End quote. The company has decided to focus on attractive markets in the Americas and in Asia, he said. The withdrawal of the potato leaves a type of corn produced by Monsanto as the only biotech crop grown in Europe. James, your quick take on that before we break down just the quick background of the good folks at BASF. Well, that's kind of what I'm interested in because I'll <laughs> confess ignorance that uh, that before having seen this story, I may have heard of BASF before, but I've certainly never really uh, contemplated who they are or who's behind them. But uh, But just on the note of the story itself, I find it... Interesting that here again is a case in point of uh, the people of Europe resoundly saying no to this uh, this biotech uh, monstrosity of this GM uh, food, and uh, and the companies have to listen because once again the people have the power. So, uh, time after time that that point is demonstrated. But anyways, let's hear more about BASF. For something like this, you know, generally you'd go to Wikipedia, and again, you know, as as we call it, you know, that bastion of truthiness. But I, I, you know, I, I love it for things that aren't really contested, like when did that album come out or is that guy still alive? <laughs> you know, questions like that. But for a situation like this, I like to go to something like sourcewatch.org, where they note BASF is the world's largest chemical company and headquartered in Ludwigshafen, Germany. Its North American subsidiary is BASF Corporation, 95,000 employees on five continents, blah, 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 blah. They are well known for being connected with Host, which is now Sanofi Aventis. 
During World War I, Bayer had a close association with other German chemical companies, including BASF and the aforementioned Sanofi Aventis. This relationship led to the 1925 merger of these companies, as well as AGFA and others, to form the IG Farben Trust in 1925. They even were proud and stated to their board colleagues, quote, Our new friendship with the SS is a blessing. We have determined all measures integrating the concentration camps to benefit our company, end quote. How about that? How about that? So we always find, and it's, you know, it's, I find it, I don't know, fascinating is the word for it, but, you know, living in a city, you can see trucks roll by that have these names that when, again, you kind of stop and think about it, you're like, oh, wait, oh, they, yeah, they've been around since, you know, World War II era. Weren't they connected to the Nazis? Whether that's, you know, the banking trucks or the other sort of military intelligence kind of connected firms. But yeah, BASF, I mean, or the I, Bush I, family. Or the Bush family. I've probably got a VHS tape over on the shelf there that's a BASF tape. So they're everywhere, but but again, maybe in the same ways that you you start to break down, you know, those words, you start to break down uh, those other kind of company words you're seeing on the truck sides and 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 others. Exactly right, but once again, it shows that even even a a company with a background like that and as uh, as powerful as they they want to believe they are, still in the face of public opposition, they're powerless. So they have to move on to. To targets that have already been psychologically softened up and then domesticated and mm-hmm. uh, will go along with the agenda like the Americas and various countries in Asia that do allow their uh, their biotech monstrosities. So the moral of the story is don't stand for it and uh, they'll leave you alone. It's it's like a bully or like anything else in life. If you stand up for yourself and don't let them uh, let them do it to you, they can't do it to you. So and and that's, so that's lesson number one. And that's how all these things are connected, aren't they, James? That's what we were saying again yesterday on New World Next Week. That it's you know look at what. What happens when an informed and you know energized populist makes their voice heard and moves on something exactly just like uh, pat from houston was saying earlier in the broadcast and when uh, the people are waking up on just an unprecedented level in all sorts of different areas and that really is the key because uh, without that we are lost but with that we we've already won in some ways so mm-hmm. we just have to stand up and continue standing up for all eternity which is the uh, <laughs> which is probably the hard part that most people don't want to accept that this doesn't ever end the price of liberty is mm-hmm. eternal vigilance but uh, but it's uh, still uh, it shows that we do have the power we just have to exercise it and that's you know as we've said before you know those constant moves and that kind of war of attrition that you know we have the tendency to go yay you know we beat you know this one thing temporarily but it'll you know it'll keep coming back and it'll keep coming back and we have to keep pushing it back unfortunately so well we've binged on the last couple of stories so let's purge (laughs) <laughs> I post up something called the binge and purge. That's just my kind of quick list of headlines. I had never heard of this celebrity chef, Paula Dean, and that could be because I don't watch corporate controlled garbage television, or at least not, not live. Like, like you were saying with the debates, it's like, Oh, I'll go back later and, and watch the, you know, the compilation version, but I'm not going to sit down and watch it anymore. There was a, a celebrity chef, Paula Dean. Apparently, she has hid her own type 2 diabetes for a long time while having made her entire name being a sort of comfort food cook. And, you know, I, I find you probably discovered this online, too. When you sort of are looking into someone or something you've never heard of, and once you start to look, you're like, oh, this person is everywhere. And apparently everyone has already been making fun of her for saying, it gets butter notoriously high fatty foods yeah go 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 paula dean on on google images and you'll see what i'm talking about it's like oh i guess this was a pretty well-known thing so now she comes out and admits that she has diabetes after pushing all kinds of crappy food recipes to people so i have a a couple clips about that or or rather a couple links and 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 clips but the interesting thing is that another sort of celebrity chef, but a guy named Anthony Bourdain of No Reservations, who I would say would be more of kind of the punk rock or, or at least kind of aggro celebrity chef. She, he has for a long time slammed Paula Dean as the most dangerous woman in America, and it gets better, James. So not only was she hiding the fact that she had diabetes while pushing all these foods, when you dig into her background and you dig into her TV show and the website 
and the endorsements. She is essentially on the payroll for Novo Nordisk and a drug called Victoza, a once-daily non-insulin injection that has global sales of $734 million in the first nine months of 2011. So uh, Anthony Bourdain tweeted, you know, oh, maybe I'm thinking about getting in the uh, leg breaking business so that later I can make a tidy profit selling crutches. It's uh, it almost beggars belief, but uh, it's quite an amazing idea to 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 promote the unhealthiest of lifestyles and then to promote some drug that will uh, supposedly make it all better. Huh? Just um, just sad, but but very true. And the weird part about this is that uh, for some reason, I, I have the feeling I have seen some of those parodies of her before. I, I could not be any less uh, connected <laughs> to American mainstream uh, media and, and, and celebrities. But for some reason, I'm sure I've seen some parodies of this before so uh so there you go no surprise whatsoever i suppose to people who know uh, what she's all about but still quite um quite disgusting really when you think about the the trick behind it uh, of uh, tricking people into into eating it and then uh, selling them the uh, the phony snake oil cure for it that's that's the thing and and maybe again kind of referring to what you were talking about how people sort of see see the headlines and just hear it and go, oh, man, the, those crazy, you know, Guy Fox mask-wearing hackers are destroying, you know, the State Department's website. I worry that stories like this, people go, oh, you know, oh, Paul, she's got diabetes. Well, that's sad. And, and, you know, that'll be it. And they won't look and go, oh, she was a shill who was lying to me all the time while on the payroll, the very people who would benefit from this. So just in the same way... This, as you were talking about with Anonymous or WikiLeaks or what essentially is this, you know, cyber war that seems to be turning hot. (laughs) As you were talking, James, and I was kind of, you know, waiting, waiting in the wings and maybe even already began to kind of talk to you. It's like, yeah, gosh, it's almost like, you know, they're causing a problem so that they can get a reaction to offer their solution on all these levels. That's, huh. that's it. Where, where have I heard that <laughs> no. before? It sounds familiar, yeah. Something like we've been talking about since uh, the inception of our various websites. All right, we'll hold it right there. Um, I'd like to hold you on. If you'll like to stay over, there's a couple more stories I'd like to go over, mm-hmm. and we'll wrap up with Corporate Report Radio here on the other side, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the broadcast, friends. James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. You're tuned into the final minutes of Corbett Report Radio here on the 19th of January 2012, where we're going over the latest binge and purge from FoodWorldOrder.com. You can find that, of course, right there on the front page. And we're going over some of the stories contained therein with James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com. So, James, let's uh, let's continue going through and see what we can dig up here. After doing this now for you know, for for a pretty long time, doing this now for, you know, five, six years, there are stories that come up and I go, God, haven't I covered that before? I feel like I've I've covered that exact same thing. But I have, and yet it still kind of comes back around. And maybe I reported about it once when it was being announced, and then it's kind of out. So this story made the rounds again, and I checked back into the archives, and I provide the flashback. It goes back to December of 2009, Scientists grow meat in labs. Meat made in a Petri dish is apparently a real thing. In what appears to be the culinary world's latest interpretation of Mary Shelley, scientists have already solved the riddle of making animal flesh in a lab and are now figuring out how to sell it profitably. This according to foodsafetynews.com. James, another story, as long as we're talking about phonies, fakes, and liars from Earth Island. Dot org. Many restaurants fake it as demand for organic food rises. So that's the faker hat trick on Paula Dean and the lab meat and the <laughs> fake organics. Yeah, and my reaction to that story was pretty much the same. I thought, I'm sure I've seen this before. And lo and behold, yes, we have seen that scientists grow meat in labs story. And it's uh, come up in a few different contexts. And we saw the uh, the uh, poop burger that came out of Japan oh. recently and all of those types of stories. So, And that one was a, a hoax, something... right? The poop, hmm? burger, poop burger was a hoax, right? 
Well, there was the guy who came out with a video that said it was a hoax, but I think his video was wrong. So I think it was actually oh. true. And the weird <laughs> thing is that 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 whole story sourced to a lab that apparently is somewhere in the city that I'm living in. So if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could actually track it down. You and could. Perhaps I should just <laughs> yeah. for the fun of it. You expose the poop burger. Yeah, I, I I don't know if my Japanese would be up to the task though. I, we'll find out anyway. Maybe maybe if enough people write or call in, I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Maybe I'll get them on the program. James, I'll, I, I'll interpret for you. <laughs> I want to yeah. mention right. a well, a positive thing. Occupy Monsanto, January twenty fourth in St. Louis. More on food freedom. So a, a positive move again. Occupy go. exactly taking a meme and trying to. Put it towards something actually useful instead of uh, some of the other stuff that we've seen coming mm-hmm. out of, of that movement generally. But uh, but absolutely great stuff. Okay, I hope people will go to foodworldorder.com to check on that. And, of course, to check on Media Monarchy and all of your related websites generally. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, so much stuff coming up each and every single day and uh, your weekly radio broadcast as well on Friday mornings. So I hope people will tune into that. And, James, for some reason, our uh, our latest uh, New World Next Week is uh, is going somewhat viral or something uh-huh. it's, uh, it's already at 13,000 views and it's oh. uh, just continuing to climb and I think it got posted to some Spanish website or something because we keep getting Spanish uh, um, comments and things comments. Huh. Yeah, I don't I, I can't really uh, can't really understand them all but they seem to be naughty words about uh, <laughs> the people <laughs> well, promoting that's, sofa. That's so, fantastic, hey, though. I love when we can you know when you and I can strike when the iron's hot I think it's sky's the limit Absolutely, as we do here on the broadcast each and every week and as we do at newworldnextweek.com each and every week. So until next week, thank you once again, James, for bringing us the latest on food, health, and environment issues. And until tomorrow night, I'm wishing all of you out there in the audience a great evening. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope to see you again tomorrow night.